The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us in today's webinar. It's a series of webinars, actually. We conducted um, every Tuesday. And uh, for example, last Tuesday, we have been speaking about combined simulation. Today, we will speak about uh, introduction for simulation. So this is going to be a training session for you. Um, and please, um, if, if you do have any difficulties of hearing us or maybe seeing the screen, let me know in the chat area or just um, just push any question for me. So uh, before getting started, let me um, introduce myself. My name is Matez Nasheen, and I'm working as the Technical Manager for the Soul System SolarWorks channel here in Dubai, but for all Middle East. And today we have a very special presenter coming from Atmata. Atmata is our partner in the Middle East. They have um, the headquarters in Jeddah. They have also office in Dubai, and they are spread all over the Gulf area. So uh, Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, um, and um, most of the countries. So uh, they have uh, five elite engineers. They are certified. They are very professional people and working as a consultancy as well. So um, each and every year, they have been awarded as um, one of um, the best reseller all over the area in technical and sales, actually. And um, the presenter that coming from at Meta today is a very special person, Rajesh. Um, is a lead application engineer who is expert in many fields of SolidWorks products. And today we will take us on a journey in SolidWorks simulation. So enough for the introduction. I will leave the stage to Rajesh to start. So yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Matas. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I hope uh, you all can see my screen. Uh, so, okay, um, uh, welcome back to this uh, webinar on uh, introduction to simulation. Uh, so in this uh, webinar, uh, what I'm going to cover here is I'm going to cover the introduction and the basics of uh, FEA theory. So why we have to use uh, uh, FEA, okay? What is the concept of using FEA? And then we are going to have a look at uh, probing the stress on a, on, a, on a simple square rod. So using our manual calculations versus the SOLIDWORKS analysis, uh, we are going to see how we are going to probe the stress on this. And then we are going to analyze a part, which is a bracket. And then we will see how we can do meshing. Uh, and there is uh, something called as convergence study. Okay, so we will have a look at it on a rectangular plate with a hole. And then we will see the analysis of an assembly which is called a ring assembly. Okay, why is simulation so important? Now the question is why is it? So there are a lot of uh, things we can discuss on simulation. Uh, so I want to highlight a few of the points. Uh, why is simulation important? Uh, so as a designer, uh, the, the, the one uh, best option we have with simulation is we can have a cost reduction. So we have uh, material alternatives where SOLIDWORKS uh, is a very vast library of materials with all their physical properties. You can also add in uh, materials with their physical properties into the uh, material library. So you can have an alternate uh, material with the same stiffness. Another option what we have here is we can have a cost effective design alternative. So as you can see here, I have a lump of uh, material uh, where I can run a topology study. So we have different studies, different solutions. So I can run a topology study and I can convert a lump of a material even to a frame structure. So a lot of design alternatives can be uh, achieved with simulation studies. Uh, you can define your life, the performance, the warranty of your product. And on the overall, you can face, your company has the confidence to face uh, the competition based on the uh, performance of your product. Uh, so uh, this is our simulation uh, portfolio. So today we have uh, we are going to see something on the static uh, simulation. So the linear static simulation, uh, which is in simulation standard. And simulation standard uh, has the features of static simulation and motion simu motion analysis. So you can do motion analysis, force calculations, 
uh, which can be calculated with uh, a simulation standard. So this is available. Simulation standard is available with uh, SolidWorks Premium. Okay. Uh, then we have some additional capabilities like hotspot detections, uh, fatigue studies, and so on. Uh, and then coming to the simulation, we have another package which is in the uh, a middle level package uh, which is called the simulation professional. So with simulation professional, some very good advanced uh, simulations can be done on frequency, buckling, thermal studies, topologies. Uh, we have the sub modeling, the load case manager. What if different loads and different factors of loads are a combination of loads? So what if these loads in this case what is it going to do so we have design studies so a lot of other simulation capabilities with simulation professional and then uh, we have simulation premium which is nothing but the non-linear analysis uh, so this is with respect to time so the loads differ with respect to time so non-linear analysis uh, which is called dynamic analysis uh, then we have the harmonic shock response we have a composite uh, analysis also here Okay, so uh, another product we have is similar works, but this I will not be speaking much about this and this is based on the abacus uh, technology. So today we are going to see something with the static uh, simulation. Okay, uh, before uh, I could continue, I would like to uh, uh, have a have a question on uh, my poll. So we do. Are we using a, a simulation software? Are you using a simulation software? You can you can answer uh, these uh, three questions. Or do you use SolidWorks simulation? Or do you use any other SolidWorks uh, solution for simulation? Now yeah, well, let's give them a couple of seconds to complete yes. the answer, please. So, gentlemen, we are expecting your contribution. Just to know more about you. Okay, more people are coming. Okay, so it's time to show the results. Ah, oh, it's good. So uh, we have um, uh, around 59, 60 percent of 59 percent of the audience uh, who are using SolidWorks simulation, and 36 percent who do not have simulation. Great. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let me proceed to the next slide. So, uh, this uh, demonstration will be of a very, you know, every engineer who are design engineer, most of the design engineers have a question like, how do I Simulate. So, how do I simulate? What is my first step? How do I start? Now, what kind of simulation I need? What kind of analysis I need? Okay, then another thing is uh, how do I create a simulation study? How do I apply boundary conditions? How do I apply forces? What do I consider while I do simulation? And the last question most of our customers ask How do I know if this is right? Because always there's a, there's a result uh, with SolidWorks simulation, but how do I know if it's right? So I will be running you through some certain uh, examples of uh, simulation where you will get an idea of why, uh, how to use simulation. Okay, so uh, this is just a concept of the basic engineering problem. So as a designer, so when we design a product as a company, when you design a product, uh, usually designers use the analytical method. So the analytical method is 100% accurate results, but these are on very simple problems. So you can see the jib crane, the cantilever uh, jib crane where it is uh, very similar to calculating the reaction forces, uh, calculating the loads, the bending moment of a jib crane, yes. And these are uh, applied and they are 100% accurate for simple solutions, okay? So coming to the numerical method. So numerical method is nothing but it's a, it has a lot of formulas, okay? And this is something, uh, what do you say? Uh, too many formulas to be, uh, to be calculated and uh, this is for complex, uh, what you say, complex uh, com components, complex assemblies or complex structures. So in this case, we use FEM. So uh, a computer is actually, a, 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 the simulation is actually a tool on a computer which processes all these results. And uh, we have to do some approximations, some assumptions to be made to process these uh, results, okay? The last uh, method what we use in the industry is we have certain, uh, you have some strain gauges, you have sensors, you have thermal gauges, 
So based on this, uh, we, we, we physically check the product. So this is called a physical uh, testing of the product. Okay, sometimes we might also do a destructive test. So this is a physical uh, testing of the product. So with simulation, we use the numerical method. Okay, so simulation is, an, uh, is a solution uh, to reduce your prototyping. This is not going to replace your prototyping or your, uh, your physical experiments, but it is a solution to bring you closer to your uh, prototyping, uh, uh, physical prototyping uh, results. So introduction of uh, the basic FEA theory. So what is finite element analysis? So as you see here, you can see, I, you can see an elephant here and you see I've broken them down into, it's like a puzzle. I've broken them down into certain kind of uh, elements. So breaking them into elements and then analyzing each element, how do they perform? So how does it perform? Okay, so we see here uh, an example of, a, of, a, of, a, of an arc here. So this arc, if I have to get the radius of this arc from a certain point, uh, and if I'm doing a segmental uh, calculation on this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this arc into a number of segments. So you see here approximately seven segments in the first uh, uh, image what you see. And if I want a more accurate solution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use increase the number of segments. So uh, just imagine the time, it might be in some milliseconds. So just imagine the time by calculating the first uh, line, second line, third line. So seven lines into the length of the line. So I'm doing a calculation for seven segments. And if I do a calculation for nine segments and as it goes on to maintain more accuracy, the time taken is more. Okay. So simulation is nothing but uh, the basic FEA theory is nothing. Analysis is nothing but it is breaking down the problem into a, a numerical uh, solution. So we are using a boundary condition on a numerical solution to break down the problem. So this method is subdividing it into uh, a well-defined elements. Okay, so, and these elements are called, uh, are joined with nodes. So uh, I will show you the elements in the next slides. So they're joined with nodes. And this is called, this process is called as discretization. So we, we discrete uh, the mesh, uh, that is we use the meshing to discrete the model. Okay, so, uh, on the conclusion, finite element analysis is a method uh, used to approximate. So you can get an approximation. It is not the final results. So keep in mind. <clears throat> and this is to get a, a critical insight into the design performance prior to physical testing. Okay. So uh, I was talking about mesh. So discrete uh, criticization of the model. So if we see meshing. So here you see an uh, universal. Uh, 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 mechanism here. Uh, so you see here, it is it, for analysis, we are doing the meshing. So you see this triangle uh, kind of a, a mesh. So this is what we call is the meshing. So I'm breaking up into a number of elements to do the simulation. So each of this element has a matrix. So it has a calculation. So based on this, based on the loads, based on the fixtures, based on the fixtures, it calculates the, the this one, it calculates the uh, stress. Okay, so we have triangles, we have tetrahedrons, uh, so this creates a math mathematical model. So uh, the mesh consists of elements. So the elements used here is tetrahedral elements or triangles in the mesh. Okay, so this is the common, so many of them ask, do we have other kind of elements like we have in ANSYS and so on. So uh, mostly widely accepted uh, for designers, uh, which gives the proper solution is on the tetrahedral and the, triangle, the triangular meshing. So as I told you, the mesh has nodes. So these are the nodes uh, where the when triangle mesh uh, uh, connects to each other. You have three nodes. Okay. So for a tetrahedral element, you will be having four nodes. So what kind of uh, elements do we use here? So we have the first order uh, solid element. So you see here, I have a solid component and uh, I've used the draft analysis. So uh, the draft mesh is nothing but it's a mesh, which is a coarse mesh. And you can see here, uh, it will not uh, neatly form on the curvilinear uh, or the curvature of the, the curvature shape of the component. So it has four nodes, each with three degrees of freedom. So we have three translation components. This is for the solid element. Okay, solid tetrahedral element, which is the draft quality. Draft quality can be used when you want to achieve or get results uh, quite fast because the number of elements are less. Okay, then we have the uh, second order tetrahedral element, which is called the high quality meshing. 
So the high quality meshing has four plus six nodes. So you can see the, the draft quality here. It has uh, four nodes, totally four nodes. The uh, high quality has around four plus six nodes, intermediate nodes, which, which forms of around uh, 10 nodes. So this has each of this uh, has around three uh, translation degrees of freedom. And this is used for curvature geometry. So wherever you have curvature geometry, this is how it is used. And you can see after deformation, how it looks. Okay. And you have, we have here, I have shown you the stiffness matrix of each element. So this is how the formula has been applied onto each element and the number of elements uh, gives you the total results. And then we have shell elements. So thin elements are called shell elements. So shell elements do not use the uh, 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 solid, uh, solid uh, triangular uh, mesh. It uses the, uh, we can, we use this uh, shell element to our shell meshing, which is called the triangular meshing to uh, mesh the object, mesh the component. So here you can see the triangular meshing and the triangular meshing has uh, three nodes each of six degrees of freedom. So this has three translational and three rotational components. So the same case, the similar as the solid uh, element, we have the triangular meshing, which is called the first order triangular shell element, the draft quality, and the second order triangular shell element, which is called the high quality. So you can see how it very neatly forms. And remember, this is because of the accuracy. So based on the accuracy of the results you need to produce, you can, uh, for, you can create your meshes uh, uh, so wise. Okay. Now uh, we have solid elements, we have uh, sheet metal elements, we have solid geometry, sheet metal geometry, we have surfaces, uh, we have weldments, that is beams, uh, uh, you have uh, tubes, uh, uh, I beams and so on. So uh, SolidWorks has a certain way of solving this, meshes to solve this. So we have uh, the solid 3D uh, mesh or the solid uh, 3D element type. So this is for uh, for solid components. So usually we use this for solid components. So when it comes to thin components, as you know, the thickness is very thin. We use the shell 2D and this is good for uh, thin walled parts and it is a default for sheet metal. So whenever you have a sheet metal component, this is the default, what uh, the thin walled, uh, the shell mesh is the default mesh, which is going to be applied to sheet metal components and even surfaces. And when you have a st uh, weldment structure, uh, by default, uh, it converts to a 1D element. So where you can check the bending moment, shear force diagrams, uh, the forces, reaction forces at the nodes and so on. Okay, so in our case here in today's webinar, we are going to see something on the solid uh, 3D element. Okay, so uh, the question is, how do I work on simulation? So I, a lot of things keep running in our mind as we keep doing our designs, engineers keep do, doing their designs a lot of things uh, running in our mind. How am I going to solve this? How do I assume uh, certain things? It's very simple. Just break down all the problem into small parts and deal with them one at a time. So take one by one, deal with them. You have to do a number of iterations, a number of analysis to achieve certain results. Okay, the FEA process with SOLIDWORKS. So what do we have with, uh, how do we do the FEA process with SOLIDWORKS? So first I have my CAD geometry. So you can see a simple bracket here with the CAD geometry and you can see here, this has uh, some fillets here. Now what, I, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to defeature it. Then you do the idealization. Idealization is nothing but I'm going to take only uh, features or objects into my scope. So in this case, I am not going to study the stresses on the fillets. Okay, so I'm going to remove the fillets and make a simplified geometry because the reason being the mesh will be complicated at the fillets. So I'm trying to simplify it. So the more you simplify it, the quicker you get the results, the quicker you can analyze, you can save time on. And then we have uh, creating the mathematical model, which is called the mesh. So in the mesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my analysis type. So what kind of analysis I'm going to do. And then I give the, uh, I apply the material and the material has all the physical properties. Uh, so I apply the material from the library. And I'm going to apply my supports, my loads. So I'm going to fix the component. I'm going to say, how is it going to behave in real world? So how is it going to be fixed? And then I'm going to apply my loads. So uh, apply your loads. And then you create the meshing, which is called disc discretization. So we'll, we'll create the meshing and then we run the solver to solve the mathematical model. 
Okay. So uh, we have here one Mrs. Stresses. So we have one Mrs. Stresses, we have strain equivalent. So I just want to just give a rough idea on this. So this is nothing but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of volumetric strain. So we have the sigma x, y, z and the tau x, y, x, z and y, z. So the principle of these three based on this formula gives you the one Mrs. Stresses. Okay. And we have the strain, which is the strain equivalent. So uh, the plane strain, so we have plane strain, also we have plane stress. So this is a, the one message is on the volumetric side. So the uh, strain works on the equivalent uh, one message uh, stresses. So I have the, I have shown you the formula here. You can, uh, for more information, you have to learn a bit about it. So you can do a small study on it. Now with SOLIDWORKS, uh, what is the assumptions? Now doing a linear static simulation, there are certain assumptions. Okay, so uh, what we see here is the material is linear throughout. So we see here, uh, I have the yield point. So after the yield point, the material is going to go, is going to cross into elastic uh, limit. But here in this case, we are assuming it's going to be linear throughout. So how we are going to assume this uh, linear throughout, we have a stiffness matrix. So we have the structural deformations. The second point is we have structural deformations, which are very small. So you have here large structural deformations, small structural deformations, the small example. Okay. So uh, in this, we, what we consider is we consider the stiffness matrix as a constant throughout. So the element equation, so I, I explained the elements uh, in the previous slide. So the element equation is nothing but F is equal to K times D. So we have, uh, which where K is the stiffness matrix, F is the external force, and D is the displacement. And then we have uh, static loads. So static loads are not going to change with time. So what do you mean by static loads are not going to change with time? So as the uh, load is applied on a, on a on an object, what happens as the load is increasing or the uh, due to the load, the object starts deforming based on the changes in the load. So different conditions. It starts deforming and based on time. So this can be uh, overcome with uh, uh, non-linear analysis. So if you have to do loads, uh, change of loads with respect to time, you can do it with the non-linear uh, analysis. Okay, just an example of uh, uh, the linear analysis and the non-linear analysis. So you can see here the non-linear analysis. You can see how this uh, tries to uh, take the shape. So you can see the loads are changing as it keeps moving and it's, it is uh, based on a time interval. Okay, so we have the linear analysis and we have the non-linear analysis. How do I start my first simulation? So number one, we create a study, we, we define our study of simulation, then we, we apply materials, we apply fixtures, uh, that's boundary conditions, then we apply loads, we match the model, run the study, and we analyze the results. So these are the steps uh, uh, which are required to create your first simulation. Okay, so from the FE input simulation uh, study tree, SOLIDWORKS simulation study tree, uh, always uh, as, as, as a person who simulates will always actually look at this. So I first see if I define my study, I send my materials, and then uh, what are the component connections in case if it's an assembly, okay? So I just check my component contacts. So what are the connections? How is my component connected to each other? Then I apply my fixtures. Make sure you apply fixtures, boundary conditions, uh, meshing the model, and then you process your results. Okay, so uh, uh, in academics, uh, we, in engineering, we always study this. So we say force is equal to stress by area. So a simple example of plane stress. So I call this plane stress. So it's a 3D problem, which is one misses, and this is a plane stress, which is a 2D problem. So we say force is equal to stress by area. So I have a, a rod here, which is around uh, 10 by 10. This is a square rod. Just for an example, just to study, I'm taking a square rod. Uh, so it's 10 by 10, and with a length of 100, I'm going to fix it at one end and apply a, a tensile load of uh, 1,000 newtons at the other, other end. Okay, so here I've defined my data. So this is force, which is around 1000 newtons. Cross section area of the rod is 10 by 10, which is 100 square mm. Okay, so what we are going to see is we are going to study by applying a simple uh, uh, formula, which is called stress is equal to force by area, which is uh, calculated here. So I should achieve a 
10 newton uh, square uh, per square mm uh, or 10 mpa stress okay when we see strain i have calculated the value of strain with respect to the young's modulus so the hooke's law with, the, with respect to the young's modulus i have calculated the uh, strain okay so in this case what are the components and what are the results we are going to see so the results what we are going to see here is we are going to see the normal uh, stress in the z direction so this is the z axis so we have axial uh, stresses that is uh, stresses on the uh, x y and z and also we have strains on the x y and z so in this case as the tensile load is applying along the z direction i am going to check the normal stress on the z direction and the normal strain on the z direction which should match my manual calculation okay so uh, let me show you in a very simple way in solid works how does this work okay uh, i will start a new part So in this case, I will. I, you can choose any kind of uh, your uh, any material you want as you are trying to do the analysis. So we are only worried on the uh, uh, the stress and the strain. So as the formula is common for any material except the Young's modulus, you can choose any material in this case. So here I have a square rod. Okay, so as I explained to you, the first steps of the SolidWorks uh, studies. So first, what you do when you open SolidWorks, if you have SolidWorks Premium, you can go to the add-ins, and also you have the add-ins here. So click on your add-ins and uh, add on uh, SolidWorks simulation. So I click on SolidWorks simulation, and SolidWorks will uh, initialize or uh, will load in the add-in for or the features for SolidWorks simulation. Now I get a simulation tab. So I'll move to my simulation tab and here I have uh, the option to create a new study. So in this case, I select new study. Okay. Give the name to your study. So I will say rod stress, just give a name to the study. So you can see a lot of studies here, various studies listed here because I have uh, all the uh, solutions or all the, all the add-ons of simulation or all the packages of simulation with my product. So if you have SOLIDWORKS uh, Premium, you will be having this. You'll be having static. Okay, so I select static. And here my study has been created. So first thing is apply your material. So in this case, I'm going to apply my material. So when I say uh, apply edit material, I will get the material uh, library dialog box. So in this case, you can see here, there are some uh, uh, parameters which are highlighted with red so these are the physical properties of the material so uh, all the calculation is based on these physical characteristics or these physical parameters okay so uh, let me select the plain carbon steel in this case so okay i have plain carbon steel apply close so you can see here now the material has been assigned okay some of us uh, we assign the material in the model so if you assign the material in the model the material will be transferred to the simulation studies so the same material applies here also you can overwrite the material in your simulation studies okay uh, so as you can see here i have applied plain carbon steel but the model does not have any material so if you are doing uh, a combination of materials yes you can apply any number of uh, materials here you require and do your studies so here i am going to fix my geometry so let me fix my geometry at one end <coughs> sorry and as you can see here, this is a fixed geometry. All uh, translational and whole rotational uh, degrees, all the six degrees of freedom are locked. So that is how this symbol indicates, this green fixture uh, symbol indicates. Okay. So let me fix one end of it. And then I'm going to apply a load of around 1000 newtons, which is tensile. So I reverse the direction. I say it is tensile. And I'm going to say this is around 1000 newtons. Okay. So having done this, now my next step is to discrete or create the uh, mathematical model. So I'm just going to create a measure of it. And in this case, I'm going to use the, uh, uh, okay, let me use the fine mesh. Okay. Let me use a high quality mesh. Okay. Default. And in 
and let me say okay so let us not worry much about the meshing i will show you how the meshing works in the next slides and now i'm going to run this study so uh, once i run this study solidworks is going to uh, give me the results so it is processing the results it's given me the results so what i get by default is i get the warm message stress like you see here it's around 14.25 and then i have the displacement and then i have uh, strain okay so in my case what i need is i need the stress along the z direction so i right click on uh, results i say define stress plot and here i have the uh, normal stress on the z direction so i select the normal stress on the z direction and let me say okay so uh, you can see here the normal stress on the d this is the overall uh, stress value it is showing but do not be confused by seeing this uh, overall value you see along the material it shows a, a blue color a dark blue kind of uh, color code which is approximately somewhere here so it is somewhere within this 8 to 10 so how do i check this so what i do is right click i'll use the probe tool so this is going to be probed at the location so i told you uh, mesh elements are something uh, mathematical uh, elements so all this has nodes so you can probe them at the nodes uh, you can probe them at the entity so i just click this and you see i get an average value and the maximum value as i probed i get a value of around 10 so uh, coming to our uh, coming to our slide here so what is the calculation what we have here is we have around 10 so the normal stress is around 10 okay going back to my model let me check the strain so uh, right click so here i'm going to say define strain plot and this is again the equivalent strain or the normal strain in the z direction i'm going to say okay so right click and here i'm going to probe this pick some points so if you have to uh, identify stress on certain locations you can use the probe option uh, where you can uh, select and you can identify the stresses okay so how much of strain do we see here so i see an, an average of 0 0.004048 and here i see a maximum of 0.4048 might be there are some more values i would like to have more values apart from this uh, 0.48 where i can go and change my chart option so i go to the chart options and here i have uh, uh, decimals of around four uh, places to be displayed i can increase this uh, decimal places and here let me probe again so that i get something very close to my calculation so as i keep probing the average of all these picks are shown here so i have here 47646 is my calculation so let me check here so it's around 476 so we see uh, this is a simple uh, calculation i just wanted to give you a, a push to simulation so this is a very simple calculation and using a simulation uh, with a particular concept will help you to uh, will motivate you to uh, do a lot with simulation so i got the young's modulus of elasticity from the material so when i say apply edit materials so you have the Young's modulus here. So you have the Young's modulus here to 210,000 MPA. Okay. So another problem statement here. So I have a rectangular plate with a hole of 40 mm diameter, which is centered to the plate. Now in this condition, the, the plate is fixed at one end and it's been applied on of a tensile load of 110,000 newtons on the other end so the size of the plate is 100 by 200 by 10 mm t so um, uh, what we are going to see here is we are going to study the uh, stresses the displacement and i'm going to tell you something as a as an uh, as a uh, analysis engineer uh, uh, how do you conclude or as an as a, as you're doing a structural analysis how do you conclude yes my structural analysis is right what i did was correct so i'm going to show you on the con convergence study also so let me close this and uh, let me start this uh, okay i have this rectangle plate. okay so this is the rectangle plate what i have so here we are going to see the types of meshes we are going to use how we apply meshes so you will be learning how to apply meshes in this and this is the size of my plate 
okay so in this case what i'm going to apply here is i'm going to apply the uh, eisi 304 uh, material so the similar way you start i start a new study okay so here i'm going to right click and i'm going to say this is a coarse mesh so i'm going to use a coarse mesh here so in this case this is the name of the study so coarse mesh is the name of the study okay now i want to show you something with meshing here so we have uh, the meshing so let me right click and say create a mesh so this is creating a mathematical model so as you can see here i have the mesh quality so you have when you you have two tabs uh, so you have the mesh quality so you have the draft quality you have the high quality okay so with the draft quality i'm using the draft quality i'm just meshing the model but when i come here you see i have a mesh parameter of standard mesh so i'm using the standard mesh with a draft quality so let me check how this uh, mesh will form on this uh, rectangular plate so you can see here as i showed you the example of the uh, calculating the uh, length of the arc so the same uh, concept has been used here so you can see this has along the thickness it has around two elements and you can see how the approximation of the mesh has been done so you can see segment wise how it has been done okay so this is a draft quality mesh so to get information of how many elements have been uh, in this mesh i right click the mesh i go to details and you get all the information of how many elements has been created with a draft quality mesh so here i have my okay element size the total, total elements See, i have here 6965 elements being created with a draft quality mesh okay so let me right click and uh, change my mesh uh, to a high quality mesh let's see the difference so i shift this on uh, top i make it high quality and let it it will remesh and you can see the difference now this is uh, taken the shape of a, of the curvature so this is uh, a high quality element so like i told you do you have in one triangulation you have four uh, a tetrahedral element you have four uh, nodes and each node has additional node to the mid of it so you can see they also deform so they take the shape of uh, to give more accuracy with the high quality elements okay so these are two kind of meshes where we saw draft quality and the high quality now let me create mesh so in this case what i'm going to do is uh, let's have a look at this uh, component okay so uh, let us see these options so we have the standard mesh i have the standard mesh so standard mesh will be used for parts uh, which are plain or planar or have uh, square edges or this kind of a square kind of a geometry yes we can use go with standard meshes uh, as this has a, a circle in the center it's preferred to go with the curvature based mesh okay so let me mesh it with a standard mesh and you can see how the mesh pattern is so you can just uh, have a look at the circle and just beyond the circle slide beyond the circle you can see how the elements form now if i change this to a okay let us see how it is inside this okay so you can see there's a slight uh, you can see the the original circle and a slight uh, difference okay so, so the, this will uh, cost in terms of accuracy so let me go for the curvature based mesh and uh, you can see here i'm using a curvature based mesh now you see the pattern of the elements have been changed so you can see it's more accurate and it it is uh, the transition from the circle to the uh, square edges uh, it has a very gradual transition and it is uh, more accurate so uh, preferred whenever you have a, a circular uh, kind of a shape or circular kind of a geometry prefer to go with the curvature based meshes okay now we are uh, going so to the dish for a second uh let me interrupt you here because uh, we, we do have a question when to use um draft mesh or uh high quality mesh or when to use coarse against fine mesh any okay. advice on that yes uh, actually, I, I, while I, after I've completed this demonstration, they would get an idea, but no problem. I'll explain on this. Okay, so uh, uh, the draft quality mesh and the high quality element, the draft quality mesh is when you have to just get some approximations to check your boundary conditions if everything is fine. To have a quick uh, result on uh, the analysis, we use the draft quality element. So once you are uh, done with that, to check 
how my uh, object behaves. Have I applied all the fixtures right to see all my uh, restraints have been done properly? Are all the components meshed properly? So are all the contacts uh, with the components meshed properly? So to check on the meshing, we use the draft quality because you, if you give a high quality mesh, it takes time. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, for final results, it's always good to apply the high quality uh, mesh elements. Is that uh, clear? You want to add something on it, uh, Mothas? I, I believe the yeah, eyes is clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, now in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to see the coarse mesh. We are going to see three kinds of meshes. So we are going to see the coarse mesh. We are going to see the default mesh and then we are going to see a fine mesh. So with these three meshes, what is the result I'm going to achieve? How are my stress uh, values going to deviate? Okay, we are going to check that here. So, okay, let me apply a material to this. So, the material in this case is uh, an AISI 304. So, I'll select AISI 304 and uh, let me uh, fix uh, the component on one side. Okay, and I'm going to apply a tensile load on the other side. So, since it's tensile, I'll reverse the direction. And this load is going to be around 110,000 newtons. Okay, so having done this, uh, now I've created the mesh. So let me recheck my mesh. So I go to create mesh. So in this case, what I'm going to do here is first thing I'm going to check my mesh quality. So in this study, I'm going to use high quality elements and I'm going to use uh, the coarse mesh. So here we have the density. So when you say coarse mesh is nothing but we have a higher element size. So uh, you have the slider here. As I move it to the extreme left, this is called the coarse mesh. So when I move it to the extreme left, the elements uh, formed on this uh, component is around, the size of the element is around 11.4. So imagine you will have very few elements to analyze this component. So when I go to the uh, uh, default uh, meshing, you can see the element uh, size has decreased. So I'm going to have a more increased number of elements in this meshing. When I go to the fine uh, meshing, you can see it is furthermore decreased to 2.8, but I'm going to have uh, still uh, uh, finer elements to analyze my geometry, my mathematical model. So as the element size keep increasing, so imagine there is a there is a equation for every element. So the number of elements into the into the what you say the, the number of elements into this equation will will cost you that much of time. So it's time consuming. So uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the coarse uh, mesh. So I'm just going to show you how the coarse mesh works. So this is going to be a larger element size and uh, let me mesh it. And once I have meshed, I run the study. So what SOLIDWORKS does is it, uh, it runs the analysis and then it gives me the stress. You can see it happened fast. Now, if I go to my mesh here and if I say mesh details, you can see the number of elements uh, which has been applied here. So it is around uh, uh, 1,173 elements have been applied. So the lesser number of elements, a quick uh, way of doing the results, but not accurate. Okay. So I have a stress value of around 402.59 and I have a displacement value of around 1.4 mm. So 1. Uh, 0.143 mm. Okay. So this is about the coarse mesh. Now, copying the same study, I'm going to use the default. Mesh. So I'm trying to check if my stress and my displacement to what, as, as you understand, uh, refining the mesh gives you more accurate results. So I'm going to see how accurate uh, to what level can I achieve the accuracy by changing the, or trying to refine the meshes to achieve this value. Okay, so here it is 402 in my course mesh. And here I'm going to copy my study and just only going to change my mesh. So here I'm going to use the default mesh. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, more higher elements into this. So let me say, okay. And here I uh, right click. I'm going to create a mesh. And in this case, just by resetting uh, this, it will switch over to the default mode, okay. So remember, I have used the curvature based mesh and my mesh quality is always high. Okay. So I'm only changing the course default and fine. So just by resetting, it comes to default where my element size reduces 
So you can imagine on this geometry, there will be an increase of the elements. So we had around 1173 elements in the previous study. So if I right click this and if I say uh, details, you can see here, uh, my elements have been increased to 8677 elements. So there's an increase of elements in the default machine. Okay, now uh, let me run the study. And let's see what is the value. Ah, so I'm getting a higher value. So you can see here as the meshing uh, is more refiner, you can see I'm getting a higher value of stress. Okay. So the question is how fine should I get it to? Okay. So it's around 408 here. Now what is my displacement? So my displacement here is uh, 0.1435. And in the course mesh, uh, let me check my displacement is 1432. So I think that this, there's not much of change in the displacement, but there is a change in the stresses. So you can see the stress value has changed. Okay. Uh, uh, let me go to a finer mesh and check. Yes, if I'm going to achieve a, a, a more higher stress result. So I will say here, this is fine mesh, fine mesh study. And copying a simulation study is quite easy. So where you can right click the study and copy them. And you see all the loads, all your fixtures, your boundary conditions are copied. So uh, I will say create a mesh in this case. And now in this case, I'm going to use the fine mesh. So make sure you have used the curvature based mesh. The mesh quality is always high. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay. And in this case, I should have more finer elements uh, on this. So more smaller elements because the element size has decreased. So you just imagine, you can see, you can feel the difference of the time between the coarse mesh and the fine mesh. So it took some time to mesh it. So when I run this study, this study should take time because the number of elements uh, due to the increase of the number of elements, yeah, it should take some time. Uh, so you can see my stress value is around 415 uh, uh, to MPA. So my stress has really increased here. And you see my displacement here is around uh, 1.435. So I don't see much of difference with the, uh, with the displacements. So there's a lot of uh, variation or there is a slight variation with the stress. Okay, now to save time, now what I'm going to do is, uh, if you study the stresses here, so while studying the stresses here, uh, I can see this area is having, is under high stress. So we see the stress, it is the yield uh, st strength of the yield stress is around 206, whereas this area is under stress of around uh, 415. So means, so after the yield, it's not going to come to its normal position. So this is what it means, okay, because the value is too high. Okay, uh, let me use a, a different technique, which is called a, a mesh control technique. So I just want to show you, uh, let us check the uh, solution time. How long did it take to solve this? It's zero, it's okay, there is nothing. It's not uh, taken anything into calculation. So I click on the study. I go to results and take the solver message, uh, message. And you see here, it is around 0 0.01 milliseconds. And uh, here my, sorry, let me check the solve result here, solver message and here, yeah, it has taken some time, it is 0 0.06 here, okay, because of the elements, so the number of elements are more. So I'm going to use a technique here, this is because I'm going to refine the mesh only in this portion and have a default mesh around the rest of the study. So I uh, make the study time more faster. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to use it uh, or I'm going to say this is going to be a mesh control study. So I create a mesh control study. Also having the same boundary conditions, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say apply a mesh control. So now the mesh control also has the, it's going to break down into very sim small components but on the area I select. So on this area, I'm going to break it down into very smaller components. And this also has the same option of course, uh, default and fine. So I'm going to use a default uh, meshing here. I'll just say, okay. Now you can see here, there's a mesh control which is applied to this area of high stresses. And the rest I'm going to keep it uh, with the normal default mesh. So I will say create mesh. And what I will do here is I'm going to reset this to my default meshing. So uh, most of the simulation studies use th this option. So I will say default meshing and say, okay. 
So let me run this study to see the results. So this study is uh, run more quite faster. And you can see here I have achieved a result of around uh, uh, 416. And with the fine mesh, uh, if I see my stress result is around 415. So very close result. So you can see here, this is called convergence. You can see here the mesh is trying to converge. Okay, let me go to my mesh control and let me try to, uh, let me show the mesh here. Uh, so I will say show mesh and you can see the, the, the refinement of mesh here. So let me further refine to see if my stress values are going to still increase at this area. Okay, so I can apply uh, or I can refine or make it a fine mesh at this point. So the... Uh, there will be a decrease in the increase in the number of elements here and there will be a decrease in the other elements since I'm using a default uh, machine. So this will take some time to solve. So trying to have more accurate results. So you can see here, now it was 416 uh, previously and now it has come to 415. So what do I understand from this study? Now how do I know if I have done it right? So if I see my previous results with the fine mesh, so you can see here I have 415.6 time and having a mesh control or refining my mesh, I have the same results here. So this is what we call it a, a stress convergence or we, we converge or we try to refine it and make it accurate as possible at certain areas by using the uh, mesh control. And also you can save time. So if you see here the study of the fine mesh, the time taken for the fine mesh, so if I go to my solver message and if I check the time taken, it's around uh, 0 0.06 milliseconds. If I come to the mesh control here and see how long did it take, this is quite fast. You can see here, I reduce the time. So uh, what we saw here is, so this is something about the meshing, what I actually explained. So. What we saw here is if we put a convergence stress graph, so if you if you check the number of iterations, the number of studies we did, so this is what is the result you will get. So you have uh, the stress value increasing from 402 to 408, then it goes to 415, and you see here it is coming, uh, it is the curve is flattened. So this is how you have to analyze or uh, do your iterations uh, with uh, a proper meshing, lesser degrees of freedom. Uh, you can save time and get uh, arrive at the proper result for more accuracy. Okay, at last. Um, uh, can I interrupt to... you for, for a second, Rajesh? Sorry for that. Yes, Motas. So we do have a question here: How we can believe on fine mesh that this result is accurate or near to accuracy? Is there any result um, validation way? So can we validate the result that comes out of the fine mesh? Okay, I will, uh, there is uh, something called as, uh, okay, I can highlight one thing here. Uh, with the mesh, if I right click uh, the mesh, I have something called as a mesh quality plot. Okay, so uh, in the future webinars, uh, we will, I'll try to cover this uh, mesh quality plot. So in the mesh quality plot, plot, there is something called as aspect ratio. So the triangulation uh, formed, uh, the mesh triangulation which is formed, you have to make sure that they are not, uh, the ratio of them should be uh, more or less equal, okay? With not a vast distortion in the elements. So if I run a mesh quality plot on this, okay? We, what you can see here is, uh, we have an aspect ratio of around 3.8. Uh, let me check. Okay, I think I will, I will, I will uh, wait, let me see here details. I uh, see here I have an, I have an aspect ratio. You see this aspect ratio. When I check the mesh details, I have an aspect ratio of 3.8. So you see here 3.877, 3.877. 3 so uh, if your aspect ratio is not correct, so there is a way to identify if your stress values are high. First, you have to make sure that uh, have you done your meshing properly. So that's another study on how you create your meshing. So check if your meshing is done properly. Are they within the limit of the aspect ratio? All the aspect ratio is covered properly. Second thing is, uh, how do I know if my mesh is right? 
is a is a, it's a it's a very good question so here if i show mesh you can see the number of elements on the thickness so the number of elements yes it's fine by chance if i have a mesh which is having around one element i would not prefer using uh, one element across the thickness so if i say i hope i get one element here no okay i have to remove my mesh control so let me delete the mesh control create mesh and here i will use the draft quality so let me see how this comes ah see this is a one element so if you're getting a one element yeah it's not perfect so you have to have uh, a proper meshing you have to have a proper idea of meshing and with your meshing like i told you apply your mesh controls applying your right mesh controls at the particular area of stress you can refine and get a proper result doing a convergence study like this by applying different meshes uh, so i hope uh, i hope you want to add something on this or uh, is it cute? i think it's clear okay yeah. Thank um, you. if uh, mazhar still has a question please let us know thank you so uh, th there are a lot of uh, some some other question if you if you can answer them now so yeah. how do i learn solidworks simulation so can oh. you advise in that Rajesh? okay uh, so uh, how do i learn solidworks simulation is a good question now i've given you the start of simulation i hope you learn something with simulation <laughs> okay so uh, uh, we have uh, two options one option is uh, we have uh, we do trainings we have certified instructors who do who are uh, uh, certified and well versed and well experienced with the simulation so we do trainings uh, for organizations for individuals and also another option is you have the uh, you have training manual so you can have a training manual where you can purchase a training manual and you can work on simulation so with a sim uh, to learn simulation you require two things so one you require the guidance of the software or the steps to be done with the software a second thing is you require a general concept of how simulation works so what are the concepts you are going to apply how is it going to work and just studying your tools so the, the books give you only the tools so solidworks give you only the tools so having your uh, knowledge on simulation the basic knowledge on simulation uh, you can compare it with your tools and you can start working on it so i learned simulation in a way of uh, first starting with the basics so what is it what is a, a basic uh, meshing so what is a, what is the basic so analyze simple components start learning on them start applying concepts from your training manuals or undergo a training with any reseller so you get an idea of how simulation works step okay, by step thank you yes, thank you um so th there is another question from um sarfaraz so can we add more than one surface in the mesh control option for mesh refinement Yes, yes, you can you can pick more than one surface. So any number of surfaces oh. can can be applied. So you can okay. have different controls so, on diff different areas, different element size. Okay, so the answer is yes, we can add uh, more mesh controls. Yes. Perfect. So there is another question um, from Hani. How do I make mesh of a tanker? What, what do you think the best way to do a mesh for a tank tanker okay when you say a tanker it's a it's a it's a it's a pressure vessel um for example a tanker on trailer or silo okay okay so it's it's, it's more of a, a sheet metal component yes yeah so in that case what we are going to do is we are going to use the uh, shell elements so like i explained here uh, we are going to use the shell elements to uh, to simulate your, uh, uh, your your sheet metal components, sheet metal elements. Your pressure okay. Vessel. So the shell element is the best way to um, yes. mesh a tanker. Yes. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of questions. So you can you can complete, and when we will handle the question at the end. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I, will, I don't need to interrupt you anymore. No, Sorry, no. it's okay. It's okay. Montas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead. So uh, uh, we have uh, this is the last part of the uh, simulation uh, webinar. So we have a problem statement. 
So this is a simple ring. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, an assembly. So previously what we saw is we saw the analysis on a part. Uh, so now we are going to see the analysis on a assembly. So how do we uh, do an analysis on the assembly? So throughout this webinar, uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to give you a concept of how to, uh, how, how do you think? So how you should put your thought process into it. So in this, what I see here, see what we see here, there's a pressure applied onto the larger plate. So it's having a pulling force of around 3.5 MPa. So remember, this is not a force, this is a pressure. Okay, so uh, it's, it's forced by area, so pressure. And then uh, force into area, sorry, force into area. So this is a pressure which has been applied on this. And the ring is fixed at one end on the smaller edge. It is fixed on the smaller surface. And you can see it is going to, it's having a pulling force. Now, when it is going to be pulled in a direction, it should have some control on the direction of pull. So <clears throat> what we have to consider here is what you saw applying your fixtures, applying the loads are very simple. So what I'm introducing here is I'm introducing the no penetration contact. So the no penetration contact is if two materials are going to touch together, might be a node to a surface or a surface to a surface. So the other material is going to be deformed. So whichever is the softer material is going to be deformed. But they are at, in no case, they are going to penetrate into each other. So these are solid elements and they are not going to penetrate into each other okay so that is one thing another thing to remember here is you have to constrain or restrain the direction of movement of the assembly okay so i will show you this so you can see on the right side i'm going to use a kind of advanced uh, uh, restraint which is called the reference geometry and i'm going to give it to make it free along the plane i select okay i will show you this i will demonstrate this to you so let me move to SOLIDWORKS. Okay. I have my assembly here. Okay. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is, okay, let me fix my boundary conditions first. So follow steps uh, as uh, described. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new study. So I will say ring assembly analysis. Okay, and this is static. So I say, okay, right. So uh, as this is an assembly, you will have uh, the structure of the tree slightly different. Uh, so you can see the assemblies here. And remember this is on the solid uh, element. So you can see this is a solid element. So. The solid works represents this element as a solid element. I have the option here where I can go and convert this to a shell element. So I can go to the shell, man shell manager or I can make this a shell element. So if I make this a shell element, you can see the, the, this, this, the, the symbol will change. So I have this. Uh, Okay, no problem, we'll, we'll come to that. Let me not get into that now. Okay, so <clears throat> what I have here is, I have my parts. So I'm just going to right click here. So for individual parts, I'm going to apply materials. So I can apply material to individual parts. If I have two different materials, I can select two different materials and then I can right click here. In this case, I'm having uh, the same material for all the parts. So this is AISI 1020. So I apply my, uh, my, uh, material now let me go as usual so i have my fixed geometry so i'm going to say uh, fixed geometry on the smaller face and here i'm going to apply my external load as pressure so i select this i reverse the direction i'm going to say this is around 3.5 mpa so yes so i've applied my uh, uh, my force now there is one option which we have to uh, take care here, take note here. So here we have, by default, SOLIDWORKS always creates a bonded contact. So bonded contact is nothing but everything is fixed together. It's like everything, the whole component or the whole assembly is welded together. So, okay. So uh, in this case, I'm going to convert my bonded contact to a no penetration contact. So we have three options here. We have no penetration, we have bonded, and then we have allow penetration. So we have three options on the top level. So this is on the global level. You also can add contacts by creating the contact set or component contacts, which will override for that particular component will override the type of contact. Okay, so having done this, uh, what I'm going to do is I have to restrain this 
in one direction. So I have to extend it in the x uh, axis. So this should move only in one direction. If otherwise it uh, can move in any direction and it can give a wrong result or it can give a result which is not uh, right. Okay. So uh, having done this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another fixture here, which is an advanced fixture. So I will say advanced fixture and I have a lot of advanced fixture here. So I'm going to select the use uh, uh, reference geometry. So in this case, if you see here, always you have to study. Uh, I always keep my cursor here and study what is. So it says faces, edges, vertices, uh, which can be applied. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to select these faces. So I need to have these faces sliding across the plane. So it should slide along, uh, so sorry, along the plane. So along the plane, so which is the plane? So I select the plane. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select, yes, this plane. So I'm saying this is called along the plane parallel movement. So you can see the behavior of the movements uh, in this uh, uh, the, this video. And here I have the, see along the plane. Yes, I'm going to allow this. I'm not going to lock this. So by clicking this across the planes, I'm locking their movements across the planes. So I'm going to lock the movements across the planes. I'm going to say, okay. So I've applied all my boundary conditions, my forces, Onto this uh, assembly. Now, next it is to proceed with creating the mathematical model. So, in this case, I will create a mesh. As I have uh, circular components here, I am going to use. Okay, let me use the high quality elements. Number one. Number two is I am going to go to the mesh. What type of mesh I am going to use? So, I am going to use the curvature based mesh. And this is going to be default. And uh, I am going to say okay. So, I am going to run the mesh. Okay, so it's creating the mesh. So the mesh has been created. Now, as a as a designer, I would like to say that okay, I think the stress should be heavy here. The stress should be high here because it's going to have a tangential contact. So just an assumption of uh, a normal, uh, a general thinking or general thought on this uh, analysis. So let me run the study. Let me see if the stress is high here at this point. So wherever you have, it's like uh, as the stress is distributed on the area, you have a larger area. Uh, the stress, uh, the stress will be more. The, the the stress will be less. So the more the pinches, the stress values are high. So you see the stress here is high. So uh, now, how do I check it? So if I want to check this, how does this behave? I will go to the displacement and let me animate this so I can see how it is displayed. So this is actually the true value. What is the true uh, stress values which have been applied? So I would like to see something which is uh, kind of more, uh, uh, what do you say, more scaled up kind of uh, behavior. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'll go to my uh, definition and you can see here, this is the true scale. So I convert to a, uh, automated means I have around uh, 0.437 is my displacement. I'm increasing the scale by around 39.9. So just trying to increase the, the moment by a scale up factor. And when I animate this, you can see how this uh, assembly behaves. So by this behavior, I can say that the boundary conditions, uh, what, I, what has been applied uh, is right. Yeah, this is how it should behave in this case. So uh, this is a, a simple example of how we do analysis. So you can see here the stress value. So if I want to print my stress value, okay, at this point. So what I can do is I can uh, right click my chart options, go to my chart options. And here I have the option to say uh, what is the maximum uh, annotation of the stress. So you can see here I get the maximum annotation of the stress. You also have the option of for ISO clipping where you can use the ISO clipping and uh, you see, you can see here, you can start as you move the slider, you can see the stresses, the stress value. Based on the stress value, you can see how much of material is undergoing that particular stress. Okay, so uh, by this, uh, I just wanted to give you a small uh, uh, insight into how we do stress analysis on uh, parts, assemblies, uh, how, what is the type of meshes we use? What are the elements we use? Uh, and uh, 
how we start as an uh, what are the contacts we use so how we start uh, using uh, analysis with solidworks simulation with solidworks i just wanted to give an insight i believe this uh, webinar what i conducted will help you at least to get starting with your simple concepts uh, applying your concepts on your design okay so what we saw in this i'm just going to summarize this whole uh, webinar so what we saw in this we saw the basic fa concepts so what is the finite element analysis i'm breaking it into finite elements so small elements and here we are using the triangular uh, tetrahedral element so what are the assumptions uh, of solidworks uh, static simulation and then we saw uh, what kind of elements we have so we have the first order the second order which is the first order is the draft quality and the second order is the high quality so the draft quality has four nodes the high quality has six nodes and then we uh, sorry 10 nodes and then we saw the fea process uh, with solidworks so how we create the fea so how we create the mathematical model we clean up the model uh, we, we 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 give the material we and then we do the meshing and so on and then we also saw what is a linear analysis and a non-linear analysis so just an overview of that and we saw the uh, simple rod which is a manual calculation versus solidworks results so we are achieving it very close to that okay and uh, and and the solidworks result yes should be more higher it should be uh, more accurate and then we have uh, we seen the analysis of a part so how we apply boundary conditions on a part and how we use the different kinds of meshing to check the stress convergence so we saw stress uh, convergence study so how a user, designer can decide that he has achieved the proper stress value in his uh, study okay and then we saw how we analyze an assembly which is called the ring assembly and we saw some advanced constraints which is called the sliding uh, restraint and the no penetration contract so with this uh, i uh, conclude my webinar uh, i have uh, i am i am i am sorry if i took a lot of time uh, before i end i would like to ask you two questions uh, poll questions uh, could you please uh, participate in this uh, poll i want you all to participate uh, please give me your uh, feedback so this these feedbacks are also always helpful uh, for us uh, to actually uh, give you more information uh give you more knowledge on uh, simulation uh, teach you more you can learn more so this will help us a lot okay let's let's give him another uh, three seconds to answer please okay let's close that poll and let's move to another one. Okay. So after this webinar, how do you want us to connect with you? So do you want to have more information? Uh, are you interested in any kind of uh, solution with SolidWorks simulation? Might be if you know. So if you do not know, you can let us know. We will explain it to you. Uh, we can demonstrate and also we can uh, we can give you suggestions. We can uh, give you a, a best. Uh, uh, value package for your uh, designs do you want to evaluate any of your designs yes you can do evaluation of your designs uh, if if you if needed you can try them so we will help you with that also so it's not only we uh, just uh, give you the software we also you can consult us for any kind of uh, uh, design validation you want to do yes we can uh, help you out in uh, achieving your designs achieve results with your simulation Okay, thank you for the contribution. I think it's time to handle questions. Yeah. So, yes. first question for you, Rajesh, what is the basic difference between linear and linear? I think you should alight on that, but if you can just summarize what the basic difference between linear and nonlinear. Okay. No. So, uh, let me go back here. So here we have so uh, uh, just by seeing this a simple example. <coughs> so the linear analysis uh, works. You see the yield graph here. The this is the yield point. After the yield point, we have the non-linear. So in the non-linear uh, analysis, what happens? The loads start changing here. So as the material based on time, 
uh, the material uh, strength starts changing here. So the, the load starts changing. So it starts yielding out. So this analysis is not uh, taken into consideration with the linear. So post uh, uh, po post linear. So we say post linear. So post linear is not taken into uh, is not uh, assumed with linear analysis. Okay, non-linear analysis is after the yield. So after the yield, what happens? So as you can see here in this video, you can see this uh, deforms and it forms back. So this is the forces as it uh, the assembly keeps moving. There are different forces acting on it. So the, the, the stiffness matrix also changes in this case. And as the force keeps changing based on the time. So every second or every uh, every second here is calculated. So the force keeps changing. The deformation keeps changing. And the formation keeps changing. So this is called a nonlinear analysis. So it is called a dynamic analysis. You can add something okay. if you want, uh, Motas. <laughs> Um, yeah, simply it's uh, if if your material is more to rigid material like aluminum, steel, and you're not concerning about after the failure what's going to happen. So this is going to be linear analysis. If your material is more to plastic, so in this case, I believe um, you should study in nonlinear analysis. Um, so let's move to another question. What are the usual cause of mesh failure? Okay, uh, I can highlight one point in this is uh, I can say that uh, mesh failure will occur because of uh, aspect ratio. So it can see there are two, uh, two things which I can highlight now. One is aspect ratio. Uh, so if you're not having proper elements, if your elements are out of uh, shape or long triangular elements, uh, one side is long. So a triangle has uh, three sides. So if there are two sides which are more or less uniform and one side is too long yes it's out of shape and the aspect ratio is it can be a mesh failure uh, or you will get high stress i cannot say it's a mesh failure you will get high stress so mesh failures usually occur based on the contacts so you see these two contacts between an assembly so if this contact is not properly defined then they can be a mesh failure so if the mesh doesn't form properly they can be a mesh failure uh, uh what i can do is in future uh, webinars i will show you how uh, to handle meshes so how not to have a, a mesh failure so it's mainly you're forming your mathematical model to behave in such a way that the adjacent uh, components will analyze so if you have a combination of shell and solid elements so like i told you the shell element has uh, six degrees of freedom that is uh, three translational and three, three rotational so every node has six degrees of freedom but the solid, solid element has three degrees of freedom. So when you combine these two also, you can have a mesh failure. So it depends on what kind of uh, element you are combining. Or it's, a two, it's a 3D solid element and a shell element, or it can be the contacts in an assembly. If the contacts are not done properly, yes, they can be. Or if the joints, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if the joints, you can check with the joints. So at the contact points or at the joints, when two surfaces are meeting, you have to study the mesh at that particular location. Okay, um, I, th I think that answered the question, Rajesh. Thank you. So another question: What is the factor of safety and how to define? Okay, a simple, uh, uh, simple, simple example of a factor of safety. So here, if you see, I have my yield strength, okay, which is three fifty one. Okay, so <coughs> uh, here, if you see, I have uh, my. Uh, one misses, let us take the maximum one misses stresses. So my one misses stresses here is around uh, 564. Okay. So uh, uh, if, if I divide, if you divide the uh, uh, yield divided by the uh, total stresses, the one misses stresses, you will get your factor of safety. Now in that case here, I have a factor of safety. So let me see, uh, this is around 0.62. Okay. So let me check if... I'm just opening my calculator. So, <laughs> okay. So, let me see. I, I think don't do need Rajesh. Okay. So, simple answer. I think uh, the, the answer is that if the maximum stress is, is beyond the yield, so which means that your factor of safety is uh, less than one, which means that your design would be failing. Correct. Uh, can we take that as an answer? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, to define the factor of safety, it's uh, according to the industry. So, different industry. Um, different accuracy even and according also about um, for for the warranty how, how much warranty you need to give or the life um, of your designs would you like to have so 
um, these all will affect um, how to define the factor of safety is going to be one or maybe three or maybe five it depends yes um, so can we go to another question can we do convergent divergent study to do that automatically to get the final correct result without doing that manually so this question comes from Abdurrahman. So can we do convergent study automatically without doing that manually? Uh, automatically, I think there is one uh, method here. When I say create mesh, I have an option uh, where I can, okay, here I can have a blended curvature mesh. No, uh, as per uh, my knowledge, I don't think you can do it. You have to create your studies with different meshes. Um, also, th there is another tool to do that. I think we, we have added that in 2019, which mm -hmm. is a P adaptive mesh. So if you change the study to P adaptive mesh, in this case, um, there is a way to change, yeah, to do a conversion. If you go to P adaptive mesh, and then, um, um, uh, as you said, you can define adaptive conversion graph. So in this case, yes, it, it will work. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, so, Abdul I can I can send you more information about that um, if you can drop me an email, please. Um, okay. So, another question, Rajesh, can we uh, give example for dynamic analysis? I think uh, uh, I kind of kind of get this. So, um, in in this um, session of the webinar today, of course, we would not going through dynamic. Uh, sorry, honey, for that, but of course, we, we can promise you that in a future webinar, we can address that dynamic analysis. Yes, yes. Um, so another question here, is it possible to apply mesh control in the area of contact on the ring? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. So that you have to be answered. These two surfaces and add the mesh control. Okay. Um, so how many elements can be used in SOLIDWORKS and how accurate is this analysis against the contour, uh, the counterparts like ANSYS? So this is the one million question, Vatish. Um, how can we compare our result against ANSYS? Okay. Comparing our that results. Yeah, I think you can uh, explain this better. <laughs> Um, you know, at the end of the day, ANSYS or maybe SOLIDWORKS simulation or maybe Abacus, um, at the end of the day, they are based on the theory that uh, Rajesh explained in this webinar. So the theory itself, the finite element method, it has itself some bugs, as you know, for example, singularity. So um, it depends on the input and the output. So garbage in, garbage out. We are always using that terminology. So um, um, whatever you have out of SOLIDWORKS compared to the Fury, compared to any other simulation software, it's, it should give you the same. If you are applying the correct input and, um, for all of them. And we do have some validation uh, tool in SOLIDWORKS simulation that compare our results against uh, the Fury and against also um, um, the, real, the real test. So, of course, we can we can share these reports that has been conducted by um, different type of institutes. So, thank you for the question, Amit. Uh, let's go for another one. I would like to evaluate SolidWorks simulation with my designs, Mazar, of course, with our pleasure. Um, so we can um, have a chat after this webinar. Um, Hani would like to get more about the prices. Of course, Hani, we will be con in contact with you regarding this. Um, I would like to have more information. Um, yeah, in the future webinar, of course, we will. We will do have that. Um, another question, is it possible to get the recording? Yeah, usually we are sending the recording of these webinars um, um, by the, the, the next day. So most probably you will receive a link uh, for the recorded webinar for this webinar uh, tomorrow. So if you didn't get the link, please uh, enjoy. Um, uh, just please um, send us an email. How do I optimize my design when I notice a failure? Will SOLIDWORKS suggest solution? So Emmanuel is giving us um, an option to answer for optimization. Can you shed the light on that, Rajesh? Yes. Okay. Optimization. <clears throat> okay. So. So we have. So do uh, we have an optimization? 
Yes. And SolidWorks. Yeah. Yes, Swap. Let me go to my. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, I, I showed you on the, this slide, we have uh, different studies. So here in simulation professional, we have the optimization study. So we have two things here to consider is uh, optimization study. Uh, so optimization study is based on certain goals. So I would need the same stiffness, but I want to reduce the weight. Okay, I can have uh, areas to retain, uh, so do not remove material. So there are certain goals which you can give here. So best to stiffness to weight ratio, uh, and some certain other goals and then we have the design study so we have another study here which is called uh, the design study so design study is nothing but having some goals certain goals and having different parameters of your uh, component uh, you can run a study and solidworks will give you the best uh, design or the best uh, uh, okay it will suggest the best design based on the study so instead of running different studies like this different iterations uh, a number of studies solidworks can change the parameters and give you a best design study so we have two studies with this which is the topology optimization and we have the design study with solid with simulation professional okay so another question here um, how to know whether the study is safe or failure after running the study uh, for example um, we get a maximum stress value. So if I want to know whether applied load is safe, how to analyze it? Okay. In that case, uh, what I will do is, uh, what you can do is, uh, if you see here, if you, if you just have a study here, but this is in an assembly. So you have, uh, you can also, so on a to total overall assembly, it is giving the stress, the one with the stress. But there is also a stress which can you can find only in the part. So you can also define the stress in the, only in the part. So if you're seeing this uh, chart, if you see this chart, you have the yield strength. So the yield strength, and you have an arrow here, which is saying this is the yield level. So after this, it is out of the yield level. So how do you consider uh, the stresses in this? So one thing is, uh, as an analyzer, as a designer what I will do is I will study first the behavior of the boundary conditions have I done the proper assumptions uh, is my component behaving in the right way uh, based on the boundary conditions is number one number two is uh, what I'm going to do is I will check my mesh uh, quality have I applied the proper meshes onto my uh, assembly of my part so once I check the mesh quality what I can do is I will then I will go analyzing the stress values so whatever you get from above this is an area is an area of concern so you have to work on this so if i'm getting high stress value here yes i have an high stress value here because this is like a pinch it's a tangential contact so when it's a tangential contact what is happening both are going to be the same solid so they both are going to be going to have equal wear and tear okay so if you have one softer material one harder material yes the softer one is going to wear out if it's both are uh, the same yes you'll have some so in this case what i will do here is i'll try to uh, refine the mesh here on this area i'm trying to find out if there is the stresses are going to go high so i'm trying to incre increase the accuracy and i'm going to check for stress convergence uh, to define uh, the proper load so uh, based on this i can identify which is my area of concern so above the yield okay so uh, mainly you can get the indication directly from the fact of safety is it going to fail or not yes yes okay so if you are below one of course your your design is not safe if you are above one, it um, it will be according to your definition of the factor of safety. Thank you, Rajesh. So uh, another question here: What is the difference between standard mesh curvature and blended curvature? Okay, so we have. Uh, uh, okay, let me move to this. Uh, up to my PPT. So we have. Uh, Yes, so uh, you see here, this is the standard mesh. Okay, so standard mesh curvature, there are two things here which you have to uh, you have to consider. So we have standard mesh, we have curvature based mesh. So standard mesh and curvature based mesh is uh, for the geometry shape. So if I have more of edge components without circular components, I can use, I can go with the standard mesh. But if I have a kind of cur curvilinear shapes, then I can go with the curvature based mesh. 
Now on the standard mesh, you can apply three qualities. So you have the draft quality, you have the default quality, you have the high quality. So it applies for both, for the standard and for the curvature based mesh. Is it uh, clear? I think yes. yes. Um, so another question from Hani. Um, so what's the appropriate condition for using um, any of them? So which one? Should we use standard, uh, sorry, curvature uh, mesh or standard mesh? Okay, it's it's very simple. Like I, I explained before, if you have uh, more of square edge parts, okay, you start using the standard mesh. Standard mesh is more than sufficient. Now the curvature best mesh, as you can see here, a standard. You can see this. If I use a standard mesh on this, I will not get accurate results here. So I will be using the curvature based mesh. So the curvature based mesh will slightly vary. You see the transition uh, from the curved surface or from the curved uh, geometry to the straight geometry. There will be a very gradual uh, transition of the mesh. Okay. The only difference is the standard mesh and the curvature based mesh uh, is more accurate. So, you know, this is a high quality and the draft quality. So the high quality and draft quality have additional nodes. So if you are having uh, curves, so in this case, if I'm studying the uh, mesh on this this part, on this solid 3D part, what I do, I, what I prefer here is I'll prefer curvature based mesh. For example, if I do not have this boss, I will go with the standard mesh. Okay. Okay. I think uh, that answered the question. So another question from Amit: Does SolidWorks analysis have hypermesh capability in multi-material analysis with contact element? Okay. Uh, I, I prefer uh, Motas. I think uh, <laughs> you can explain better on this. Um, yes, we do have that that capability, and also you can define different type of material um with different type of contexts in solidworks simulation um so another question is for um for the ring test can we add spin to the movable ring along x z and x y plane for the simulation yes you can do it okay um so another question can i get the certificate for this webinar actually we, we are not um into that sorry um um Abdul Shamir. so um um maybe we can consider this in the future webinar thank you for the note um so another question from cam this is my first time to attend is there any guide manual this is for um yeah it's um the guide manual is not going to be for webinar but of course you can contact your nearest reseller and um with that yes he will provide you with all the information about solidworks simulation of course as rajesh said um we do have a lot of services here for the training for even um do on job training for solidworks simulation so another question from Mazhar, I think that's the, the last question. If we have assembly of solid and weldment as well as sheet metal part, in this case, which element should be select as solid, shell or beam? Shell, shell elements. Okay. So, uh, however, we, we, still, we still have the constraint, um, not the constraint actually, the ability uh, to combine different type of meshes but again it depends on the geometry itself if you are using beams for example uh, sorry structure members so in this case go for beams if you are using sheet metal in this case go for um a shell element if you are using some sort of solid uh components so in this case you can go for solid element uh here is another question so it was not the last question so sarfraz is asking can i get a recording file of this webinar yes of course as i said um we should be sending you uh, the link of the recorded webinar of today webinar is going to be sent uh, to you tomorrow by tomorrow so if you did not receive that please just push me an email and i will be happy to send you the link so i think that's all for today thank you so much rajesh i would like really to thank you um 
for all of these uh, informative session. Um, um, it's really giving a lot of information. Um, yes, it's basic, but even for me, it's remind me with a lot of um, uh, things that I maybe uh, forget about uh, analysis and the theory itself, finance element analysis. So thank you for all the attendees. Thank you so much for your contribution and see you in the next Tuesday. Um, and the next Tuesday, we'll be speaking about data management specifically, and we'll give, a, again, an introduction about um, everything about data management. So thank you all, and have a great day. Thank you, Motas. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.